On March 18, 1925, the Tri-State Tornado struck three states in the United States, first forming in Missouri, then cutting a path through Illinois, and dissipating in Indiana. More than 2,000 people were injured during this tornado, and 695 were left dead, making it the deadliest tornado in U.S. history. This tornado also cost $16.5 million in damage, which in today's money is equivalent to $1.4 billion, making it one of the costliest natural disasters in U.S. history. There is uncertainty of when exactly the tornado formed, but it was first sighted in the forest hills of Moore Township in Shannon County, Missouri at around 1 o'clock p.m. Central Time. 49-year-old farmer Samuel Flowers was recorded to be the first fatality of the tornado, killed around 1.01 p.m. Central Time when he was caught off guard by the tornado. The tornado then moved northeast, hitting the mining town of Annapolis. In just a matter of minutes, the tornado left two dead and leveled 90% of the town. 25 children and their teacher were in school during this tornado, and the two-story brick schoolhouse collapsed in on them. Thankfully, no one in the schoolhouse was killed and everyone in there made it out with minor injuries. It then hit another mining town of Leodana, destroying many mining machinery and several structures. The tornado then continued moving northeast, getting bigger as it passed through Cherokee Pass. The tornado then moved to Bollinger County, where it damaged two schools and injured 32 children. Near Licksville, multiple homes and farms were destroyed and two children died while a third child died from her injuries a week after the tornado. The tornado then moved to Perry County, where it was reported that the tornado had developed into a double funnel in which two major vortexes coincide with the tornado, and it struck the town of Beale, killing two people and destroying many homes and buildings. A farmer was injured near Brazil and then died from his injuries four months later. Homes and buildings near the town of Frona were destroyed too and one woman was killed and another was injured, then died from her injuries 10 days later. All in all, at least 12 people were killed from the Tri-State Tornado in Missouri and a total of 200 were injured. Due to the lack of reliable record keeping at the time, it is unknown if those numbers are correct but that is what has been reported. The tornado then crossed the Mississippi River and into Illinois. The fact that the tornado crossed the Mississippi River shocked a lot of people, because many people believed that tornadoes could not cross rivers. Because the Tri-State Tornado crossed the Mississippi River, it dispelled that myth. The tornado started grinding through southern Illinois, eventually leading up to the town of Gorham at 2.30 p.m. Central Time. A reporter from the St. Louis Dispatch wrote about the event. All morning before the tornado, it had rained. The day was dark and gloomy. The air was heavy. There was no wind. Then the drizzle increased. The heavens seemed to open, pouring down a flood. The day grew black. Then the air was filled with 10,000 things. Boards, poles, cans, garments, stoves, whole sides of the little frame houses, in some cases the houses themselves, were picked up and smashed to earth. And living beings too. A baby was blown from its mother's arms. A cow picked up from the wind was rolled into the village restaurant. Near the center of town, a large school that housed both grade school and high school students was destroyed as the tornado tore the roof off and destroyed the thick walls. 13-year-old Margaret Brown, daughter of Superintendent Lewis Watson Brown, was killed when the large brass school bell fell off from the peak of the roof, crushing her and splitting her in two. Margaret's mother and Lewis's wife Della was also killed after their home was destroyed. Almost every structure in Gorham was completely destroyed. More than half of the population of Gorham was either injured or killed. 30 people were killed in Gorham, while 170 were injured, six of whom later died from their injuries. The tornado then headed up to the nearby mining town of Murfreesboro, which at the time had the population of 15,000 and was very big on coal shipping as well as its laid-back prohibition laws. Most of the homes and buildings in Murfreesboro were destroyed, including the M&O Railroad Shop, where 35 people were killed. Schools in Murfreesboro were destroyed as well, with 17 students killed at the Longfellow School and another 9 students killed at the Logan School. At the Lincoln School, the children were called in from recess once it was noticed a storm was coming. The windows of the school shattered almost simultaneously and the wall on the second floor collapsed and crumbled outward. However, thanks to the precautions of the school officials, the students were moved to the northwest corner of the building, 
and there were no injuries. In the basement of a Baptist church, a funeral was taking place. According to Reverend H.D. Abbott, he had just begun reading the funeral sermon when they were disturbed by a thunderous noise. Then a large portion of the church collapsed. Thankfully, because everyone in the church was in the basement, everyone made it out with no injuries. After the tornado left Murfreesboro, large fires ignited in the damage because of the excess coal, killing 18 survivors as they were trapped in the rubble. In total, 188 people died in the immediate tornado in Murfreesboro, including at least 20 who were never identified. The official reported number of injured people is 623, although other sources claim it could be higher. Of those injured, 46 later died from their injuries, raising the total death toll to 234 in Murfreesboro, making it one of the deadliest single-city tornadoes in U.S. history. The tornado then started heading northeast out of Murfreesboro and destroyed many farmlands. Electra Beasley and her son Richard were killed when their farm was destroyed and swept away, and one couple was killed after their car was picked up and thrown 50 yards from the main highway. The tornado then struck the nearby farming town of DeSoto, where nearly the entire town was destroyed. At the Alban State Bank, many residents took shelter in the bank vault. Being that the bank was largely destroyed, the fact that many residents were in the bank vault as the tornado roared overhead, it saved all of their lives. However, many other people in DeSoto were not so fortunate. At the DeSoto school, the stormy skies prompted school officials to call the children in from recess. Once inside, the girls were told to report to their desks, while the boys were assigned to shut all of the windows as a tornado was approaching them. Just then, all of the windows exploded in a storm of glass and debris. Because of the extreme winds blowing inside the schoolhouse, it caused the top floor and a number of brick walls to collapse, crushing nearly 30 students to death. Because they were near the exterior walls closing the windows, the majority of the children who were killed were boys. Four more children were caught outside when the tornado struck. Three girls were using the outhouses when they were picked up by the tornado and were thrown nearly two tenths of a mile across the railroad tracks. Another girl was picked up and thrown some distance before splitting in half after hitting a steel light post. Jackson County Sheriff George Boland was also reported to have been killed by the tornado in DeSoto. It was reported that when the tornado struck, it had lifted him off the ground while he was on duty, and he disappeared in the funnel. Unfortunately, we will never know the official cause of his death as his body has never been found. In all of DeSoto, 69 people were killed and 105 people were injured. Out of the 69 people that were killed, 33 were children. After destroying DeSoto, it started hitting the countryside areas of southern Illinois, narrowly missing the town of Hearst in Williamson County and hitting the small village of Bush, where 10 people were killed and 37 were injured, four of whom later died from their injuries. After destroying much of Bush, the tornado crossed into Franklin County, devastating many of the rural areas in that county and killing 25 people. Then the large tornado headed toward the large mining town of West Frankfurt. The tornado destroyed much of the densely populated areas of West Frankfurt. At the Orient Mine, a large multi-ton coal tipple was blown over and rolled by the tornado. The tornado killed 81 people and injured 410, 21 of whom later died from their injuries, bringing the death toll up to 102 for West Frankfurt. After West Frankfurt, several smaller mining villages nearby were obliterated by the tornado and more lives were lost. 26 people were killed in Caldwell. 33 people were killed in Parrish. Parrish was actually destroyed so badly that it cut off all of the town's means of outside communication. Parrish's devastation was only discovered by a passing train which arrived in Thompsonville to alert them and other nearby towns. Parish was so damaged that many residents and businesses moved on and the town was never rebuilt. Currently, Parish, Illinois is now a dispersed rural community. The tornado then destroyed other rural areas of Franklin County, killing six more people. In total, the tornado killed 192 people in Franklin County. The tornado then destroyed other rural areas in Hamilton and White Counties, killing 65 people and injuring 120. Once the tornado charged through southern Hamilton County, the tornado reached its largest width at 1.5 miles, or 2,400 meters, wide. 
More and more farms and homes were destroyed in Hamilton County, killing a further 28 people and killing 17 in White County. The tornado then crossed the Wabash River and into Indiana. The first town in Indiana to be hit by the tornado was Griffin, where not a single building was left undamaged. 41 people were killed and 202 were injured, five of which later died from their injuries later on, making the death toll 46 for Griffin, Indiana. After the tornado left Griffin, it crossed into Gibson County, causing rural areas in that county to be completely destroyed. It also destroyed part of the town of Owensville, as well as killing nine people in the town. The tornado then moved to the town of Princeton, which was a large factory town. The tornado destroyed many homes and buildings on the south side of town, and even the Heinz food production factory was destroyed. 38 people were killed and 152 were injured in Princeton, six of whom later died from their injuries. The tornado then traveled 10 miles northeast into Pike County before finally dissipating at 4.38 p.m. Central Time. The tri-state tornado destroyed many towns and killed a total of 695 people, 12 in Missouri, 588 in Illinois, and 95 in Indiana. Because of the lack of video cameras in general use at the time, as well as a lack of Doppler radar, there was really no way of knowing whether all of this was caused by just one tornado that remained on the ground for over three hours, or a series of tornadoes that touched down in various places. Whether or not it was one tornado or a series of tornadoes is a huge debate among the scientific community. However, it is a generally accepted theory that the tri-state tornado was one tornado that was on the ground for over three hours, even though the average tornado is on the ground for just 10 minutes. Unfortunately, we may never know which theory is true.